Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at two of my favorite tools inside Mari, the color to mask and the color range to mask. And I will show you three ways I like to use these nodes inside my texturing workflow. Now they are very simple nodes, they mainly work as color pickers. So the color to mask turns a picked color into a mask and the color range to mask turns uh, multiple selected colors into a mask. And because of their function, they are incredibly useful when you want to isolate some information from an ID map. So that's the first method we're going to take a look at today. And as I view through the color to mask now, the object is showing up black. And that's because by default, the picked color is white and the color to mask is not detecting any information, any white information in the ID map. So I have to go and view the ID map and pick the color I'm interested in. So let's say I want to isolate the top part. Now I have the color picked here and as I view through the color to mask again, now I have a nice and clean black and white mask. And this is great. But let's say that now to this mask I want to add also the bottom part. Now I would have to create another color to mask, select the bottom and merge the two nodes together. That's why more often I like to use the color range to mask. So as I double click, you can see that in the node properties, I have a lot more options. And this time the object is not showing up black. And that's because I have a little tick box here for the show background. Now, this is really useful as I can go down here and then <clears throat> while looking at the color range to mask, I can select the color from my source. So I will select the top part again. And now I can see my selection against the background. So I can pick easily also the second color. And as I do this, you can see that the color is here, but nothing is happening. And that's because the color range to mask works in slots. So I need to say how many slots are active. So let's say two here. And now the mask is working as expected. So now let's say I'm happy with this. I will turn show background option off. And uh, here I go. Now I have a nice and clean black and white mask for the top and the bottom part of this briefcase. Now let's say I want to export this. It's good practice for me to always create a black constant as a background in case I have any transparency information. So I will merge these two together and now I'm ready to export this map. Another way I like to use the color range to mask is wherever I want to extract some information from an already baked color map and turn that information into a mask. Like in this case, I have the logo and the letter baked in together, maybe because I merged them earlier on, or maybe because I received this map from another artist. And now the look dev artist is asking me to provide an isolation mask, so a black and white mask for the yellow part of the logo. Now, because this information is already very contrasty, I could desaturate everything and then play around with the levels until I find the sweet spot. But I think that the color range to mask is very, very useful in this case. So I will go in and pick the yellow of the logo. And as I do so, you can see that the mask is working, but it's missing a lot of the information. So I will play around with the tolerance, so the expand here, and just boost it all the way up to one. But even then, I am missing a lot of the information. And especially around here, the breakup, it looks like the yellow is getting darker. So maybe I will try to add a second slot for a darker yellow. So I will pick the same one and just tone down the value here. Oh. And as I do this, it looks like the map is expanding and it's doing what I want. Now I don't want to go too low, otherwise I will basically change color and pick some information I don't want. This is very sensitive, but something like this. And as I turn the show background off, here we go. Now we have a black and white mask and the color range mask really retains all this information, all this breakup. And I think this is really powerful. 
I think this is especially useful also when um, you have a polarized image that you projected on your 3D asset. And because all that information, all the grunge, all the rust, all the decals are baked in together, you want to try to find a smart way to isolate that information and give it to the look of artist. I think that the color range mask in this case can be very, very useful. So before we jump into the last part of the tutorial where I show you more on the color range to mask, I want to do some prep work for it. As you see, I blocked down some colors for the materials of the briefcase and now I want to upload some references for it. Traditionally, I would use the image manager, but recently I discovered this new feature inside display properties where I can upload an image to my background canvas. So I prepared a little mood board, 1920 for 1080 with all the references for my briefcase. Now, as you see, this, this way of viewing the references is extremely useful. This is great if you're matching, trying to match a concept or you have some specific references that you always want to keep next to your asset at all times. Looking at the references, you see that the briefcase images are not graded and they're not polarized. And they're also not really good quality. But these two images especially, they show that the top and the bottom of the briefcase has a lot of character. It has a lot of information, it has a lot of details, and uh, a lot that tells the story of this object. So what I want to do now is I want to go into Photoshop and break this down. So now I'm into Photoshop and I brought this image in, as I think is the one that best shows all the characteristics and features of this asset. And it's really good to always go into Photoshop before you start texturing or painting in Mari. It, it really helps you to visualize your workflow and to plan any isolation masks or any color breakup that you really want to add onto your asset. So I marked out some of the large breakup I see here. Uh, one is more red and just a bit more dark and it runs around the edges and the corners. And the other one is a bit more light and yellowish. And then I have a, a mid frequency breakup that is a bit more patchy and it's darker and redder and, uh, and often also runs along these scratches here that are the smallest breakup that we have on the surface. So now that I plan this out approximately, I want to go back into Mari and start to rebuild these color variations here with the color ranged mask. So now we're back into Mari and uh, on top of this base, we really want to start building up some of that color variation we discussed into Photoshop. And since we identified that most of the information is on the bottom and the top of the briefcase, I made a little projection of these two angles. So as you can see, the top is not really looking great, <clears throat> but we can still see some of these very, very nice and unique marks on top of the briefcase that really tell the story of the object. And I really want to try to, well, the, the bottom is, is working a lot better. And with these two angles, I really want to try to use the color range to mask to extract some of those information. So I'm going back and I'm creating a color range to mask. So we, as we've seen before, I need to pick a color and we already, already know what color to pick because we pinpointed that into Photoshop. So I will go with my first large breakup. And uh, here we go. This is what we get from the start. And it's already looking great. You see that I obtained some of these details here and there is some breakup. But as I turn the show background on and off, the white is expanding a bit more than what I want. 
and I also seem to lose some of the variation in these areas here. Now I could play around with the expand, but what I also find very effective is, is to turn down the gain to 0 0.4. And this really gives me much more range. And uh, I think this is working well. Of course, you can, uh, you can play a lot with these values, but for the sake of this exercise right now, we're just going to keep it nice and simple. Now, because I have this transparency here, I want to fill the background with a constant. So I'm creating. OK. So this is the mask I have so far. I'm pretty happy with it. I know I can go back and change it at any time. But now I want to reference this down the node graph. And to do that, I'm going to use uh, radio nodes. Now, radio nodes are really powerful. I highly suggest to look them up if you don't know how they work. And maybe I will try to make a video myself uh, just for those. But I also suggest to set up shortcut for them. And my shortcut is Shift D. <clears throat> I'll call this ISO large round, oh, round red. Great. And now I want to reference this down here. I already have a backdrop for the layer, the the color variation layer that I want. So shift R it's my shortcut for the radio node, and shift C is to connect it to the transmitter. And then I will plug this inside the mask. Now the mask is ready. And for the variation, I want to keep it nice and simple, so I will just create an HSL and change the values of my base color. Now everything is in place. And uh, I am ready to change my HSL. So we said that we want something darker, 0 0.8 maybe, and some with a, with a bit of red, just a tint, so maybe minus one. And this is what I get with the color range to mask node and the mask I created so far. Now, the top part is not working as well as the bottom, but I think that it's, it's still good. It still gives me some of that variation. Of course, uh, because I don't have any information on the sides, then I can always go in and paint it by hand. But the bottom part is looking really well. And, uh, and uh, here you can see how it's giving me some of these details here that otherwise would be really hard all these micro breakups that otherwise would be really hard to obtain with a stencil. And because I'm extrapolating this information from the projection with the color range to mask, I can go back and uh, tone, it, tone it down if I want or change it at any point in time. And maybe I want to repaint part of the projection and it will update automatically all the information on it. So this is really powerful. And uh, now I want to replicate this process for every and each layer of color variation we've seen in Photoshop. So as you can see, starting from the projection, I repeated the same process and created ISO masks for every and each layer of color variation we discussed. So now I'll show you how those look like. So this is a lighter brown. Then I added the mid frequency darker brown. And even if this, I thought it was a bit too broad, I still liked how it looked. So I decided to implement another layer for it to transition better with the scratches. So I used the same ISO, I contrasted it a bit with some levels, and then another added another HSL on top. And so this is how it looks. And I think it's looking closer to the reference, so I'm pretty happy with it. And to finish up, I added some scratches. So this is the final result. And again, we started from a projection full of uh, specular information, and we ended up having a flat color. 
and this is just really using the color range to mask. I think it's a very interesting technique considering that because everything comes from a projection, all these details here on the texture are really working together and they're, they're all connected in a way and uh, I think it's, uh, it's working pretty well. Also, because everything is broken down in masks, I can then reuse all this information here inside the roughness map or the bump map. And as you can see, the top part is not really working as well as the bottom. But that, that's not really my main concern. I knew that when I made the projection, but I still managed to retain some of this information here, which I think is still very valuable and tells a lot about the object. So I can always go in and then fix all these areas and uh, you know use some stencils and hand paint some stuff with some brushes. And then maybe for this sides here, I will use some smart masks from Mari or some substance masks and uh, I will integrate what I did so far with those masks. So this is really just a good starting point. I especially like to use this last method here when I receive a concept. Maybe I get some concept or a paint over of a character from the art department. And for example, the character has some specific color breakup or maybe has some marks, tattoos or war paint on the face. And because the concept artist before me worked really hard in balancing those shapes, I think it's important that as a texture artist, I try to respect his work and try to use it as a starting point, at least for my texturing workflow. Even if uh, maybe I get one or two angles, like in this case, for this asset, and the projections get distorted, I still think it's worth a try. Of course, sometimes this technique will just not be the right way to go. So here you go. These are my three favorite ways to use the color range to mask in my texturing workflow. But today we've seen only some of the options of this node. You can also use it to color correct areas or apply the substrate to mask selection and more. You can get very creative with it. So I really want to know how you use it. And if you have any suggestions or questions, feel free to reach out or leave a comment below. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial. Happy texturing.